So I want to show you a nearly free way to get a nearly infinite number of HDRI backgrounds for your Blender or any other software models here. Now I say background specifically because what I'm really talking about is, is a HDRI image that you're not necessarily using just for the lighting information. Uh, if you want to just light your scene with the lighting information and you're going to come down and, and make it a transparent background or you can't see the background at all in your scene, you're not going to see it anyway, well then just use the really good ones. But I'm talking about a scene where you actually want the thing in the background to be part of your scene. And it is a true HDRI because I'm getting reflections here. I'm getting a little bit of light information. Now you don't have to do the lighting step. That does involve Photoshop. That's the nearly free part. Uh, but all the other parts of this uh, process are free and I'll show you how to do this. So I'm going to jump over here and show you the way that you're going to want, where you're going to want to find your HDRIs if you are just using it for lighting information. And that's of course the well-loved uh, HDRI Haven now merged into Polyhaven. And this is where you're going to find a whole bunch of really terrific HDRIs, specifically ones where you don't need to actually see the picture. You're just getting the lighting information. These are better than anything you're going to do. We're going to kind of fake the lighting a little bit here in Photoshop with how I'm going to show you how to do this. And you can kind of get kind of color cast and that kind of thing, but it's not going to be like using these. So use these if you don't expect to see the background in your model. But if you do want to see the background in your model, there's, it's a little limited here. As, as wonderful as Polyhaven is, as, as a, a wonderful gift that it is to the 3D community, there's a lot of kind of like meadows and things, you know. So if there's not a lot of sort of biodiversity in in this in the images. Uh, they're mostly daytime or early morning images. There's not a lot of nighttime scenes. So if you want some of that or you want a specific place in your scene, um, I'll show you how to do this. So go and find this little website here, uh, iStreetView.com, 360iStreetView.com, and you're going to just download this little app. It's very small. And all this little app is, is it's actually the downloader. What you're downloading is just this. Like there's nothing to it. It's just basically what gets it off of Google Street View and into your computer. So we'll come back to this here in a second because what you need is this panorama ID, which is buried in the metadata of the Google Street View images. So how do you get that image? Well, you use their other website over here. So this is their website, iStreetView.com, and this brings in a kind of a Google Street View in here. It's a little clunky to use, although you can just use this, um, but uh, it's going to give you a little default scene here. So this is a little hillside in Montenegro, and every time I open this up, they're kind of like pretty impressive scenes in here. So I think what it's doing is just saving what other people have already plugged in here because there's like a lot of really good ones. So like here's like this, I don't know, Crusader Castle in Syria or something like that. So they're kind of sort of beautiful, um, the ones that are, are already in here. You can just go down the ribbon here and find something that you like. But if you want to find a specific spot, you can move the little um, street view person around here into the scene and just find like another spot there, you know. Like let's, you know, a little, little road somewhere there in the former Yugoslavia here in Montenegro. Um, so maybe that's what you're looking for. Well, great, you can use that. But you probably are going to want to find something more specific. So you can poke around inside here, but I think it's actually better to just go to Google Maps and poke around in the world. So this is the one that we're, I'm going to show you how to use this process because what is this? This is just amazing. It's like, is this the Mars? Is this like Tatooine? I mean, I don't know. This is a really exciting, interesting one here. And it's, it's not a location that a lot of people have seen. It's not the Mojave, it's not the Grand Canyon. Nobody's gonna look at this image and go like, oh yeah, I went camping there once. And the reason why is because it's in Iran. And that's the neat thing about using the Google Maps here is that you have, just click on the Street View and you have all the places in the world where Google Street View is. Um, so you can just do that. So maybe you want to make a little scene of like aliens attacking your house or whatever. And if your house is on, your street is on Google Street View, then you can just go download that one and make it look like monsters are attacking your house. Have fun. Um, but of course the street view is only in certain parts of the world. So there's a whole lot of the interesting places in the world that you can still do this with. And I think it's actually better because you're not dealing with all the street view nonsense with the streets and things on it. So I zoomed in just into Iran, a place where I knew there wasn't going to be any street view. And you can see all these little blue dots everywhere here. These are just places where people have uploaded panoramic views, which is what we want anyway. And the nice thing about this is oftentimes, if somebody's gonna to go to the trouble, like, oh, I'm gonna click on that one, that looks cool. Somebody's gonna to go to the trouble to upload one of these things, it's gonna be someplace kinda of cool, like this, like ruins in the desert here, like, oh, 
I'm gonna come back and get this one. This is this is this is really kind of neat. It's a little bit of a blurry bit there, but for the rest of it, it's pretty cool. So the fact that somebody has taken the time to put a little blue dot on there means it's probably a pretty cool place anyway. You can also, of course, just search by famous locations. So the nice thing about that is if you type in Grand Central Station or something, then you usually find down over here in the photos there's going to be a Street View and 360s category in there. So boom, there you go. Here is it. This is a, if you wanted the main terminal of Grand Central Station, there you go. But you can also scroll down through this little ribbon here off to the side a lot faster than clicking on blue dots. So maybe what you want is like an exterior shot on a, there you go, an exterior shot on a sunny day. We've got a nice strong sunlight in here. There's the front of the building. Maybe this is what you want. So however you find it, you go ahead and let's go back to our Iranian desert over here. I'm gonna go ahead and grab this and I'm gonna copy that once you find the spot that you want. And now I'm gonna go back to their little website over here and I'm gonna click on load a panorama. So when you click on that, you enter in the URL and this is the correct URL. So you go ahead and say, load that URL, boom. And then there's the scene, our scene in Iran that we were just looking at before here, all ready to go. So what we're after here, what this guy needs is this panorama ID and that's where we get it. We come over here to this little button right there. We click on that and that's loaded it on, uh, into our clipboard. So now we can go back into this and it's already there again. Just paste it right over here give it a destination and a name. And then I also recommend maybe dropping the resolution. That first one, when I first started playing with this, I was using the full resolution and they're just enormous. They're like four feet wide. You know, you try to bring that into Blender and it's gonna become about your background, not about your model. So um, this one here, the 6,000 resolution one, turns out to about 4K when you're all done. So that's pretty good. So you can go ahead and use that one or, or smaller or bigger, whatever you think, it's up to you. Um, but I'm gonna go ahead and say download that panorama. So what that's doing is it's taking that spherical image off of the Google site here, and it's dropped it onto my desktop. So let's go find it there. So now I'm gonna go ahead and open it. Now this is the optional spot, the optional part. You can just take what I just downloaded and um, and use that. And it's just not gonna have any kind of lighting information. We're gonna to try to fake the lighting a little bit here by grabbing this Iran desert over here. So this is what I just downloaded, there it is. So here is a scene where now you can go in and fix any of this stuff. So you can come in here and like take out the people in it or fix maybe a bad scene or like this weird thing in the sky like I've already done. So I'm gonna go over here and just do uh, uh, Iran desert fixed over here. So again, I did a real quick kind of clone stamp thing um, and a little context aware fill and I got rid of the people and the woman in the foreground and the shadow of the photographer and all that. So I'm gonna go ahead and use this one. So I'm gonna go ahead and close our Iran desert, the original. So this is the exact same thing. So again, you can save this and you could do this with Krita or, or GIMP or any kind of program here. That if you're just coming in and just kind of erasing stuff, you don't want in the image, bring this straight into Blender, you're good. Now, if you want to do this fake HDRI part here, the only way I know how to do this is with Photoshop. So if you know of a free tool that can do this, let me know in the comments because I'd love to know about it. So what I'm going to do first of all is I'm going to come up here to File, and I'm going to go ahead and Save As, and I'm going to save this as a PNG, and I'm going to call this Iran Desert. I'll take the fixed off of it. I'm going to call it Iran Desert Zero and I'm gonna say, okay. And then I'm gonna save that. Okay, now what I'm gonna to do too is I'm gonna come up to uh, adjustments and I'm gonna say exposure. And this is where I discovered, I was playing with this particular one. That's why it's, it's, it's been uh, loaded in, uh, in all the fields already. Cause I was playing with this one. It was getting, it was coming in really still blown out. And I realized that you don't necessarily have to just do an equal number. So this is a really bright scene out in the desert. So I'm gonna actually make the lower exposure here, negative four. I'm gonna take it four steps down there and make it much darker. And that's gonna end up with a, a, a much more realistic looking scene here. It won't get, look quite so blown out when I'm done. You don't have to do that. If you've got a more sort of, you just got a regular class cloudy day at the beach or whatever, maybe negative two is fine. So I was doing negative two and positive two for everything until this one. But then I realized like, oh, okay, they don't have to match. They don't have to be balanced. Also, the first few that I did, I was trying to do more steps. I was having a negative two and a negative three and a negative four. And, and I don't think it actually matters that much because it's not actual raw camera data. So there's no real information there. We're only kind of faking it, kind of tricking Blender into thinking that there's lighting data in here. So I'm gonna go ahead and say, okay, to that one. And I'm gonna go back up, save as, and this time I'm gonna name it Iran Desert. And I'm gonna say negative four and then go ahead and save it. And then I'm gonna undo that step there. And I'm gonna go back up here to the adjustments and I'm going to go to exposure again. And this time I'm just gonna to go to two because it's really bright. So I'm not gonna to jump to four because it would just be white, you know? So they don't have to necessarily be, be balanced, which is something I discovered getting ready for this video actually. So now I'm gonna go up again and say, um, uh, save as one last time. And then we're gonna call this uh, two over here just so we can keep track of them. 
and we're going to say great. So we have our, our 0 and our negative 4 and our positive 2. So we're all good. So I'm going to go ahead and close this out. I don't need it anymore. I'm going to go up here to File, and I'm going to come here to Automate, and I'm going to come to Merge to HDR Pro. So I'm going to pop that open, and then on my other monitor here, I'm going to pull this over. It's going to say, which files do you want? I'm going to be careful which ones I grab here. I don't want that one. That's the original one we just downloaded. That's my fixed one. What I want are these three right here, 0, 2, and 4. I'm going to say, OK, there they are. I can say, OK. And then it's going to bring these into Photoshop there. So you can see them populating over there in the layers. So now all I need to do is it's going to open up this other window off the side here. I just need to tell it which ones these are. So this is obviously the negative four. So I'm going to click on that little radio button for EV, type in negative four. And then I'm going to click forward, and that's obviously the two. And I'm going to click forward and change that to zero. So I have my zero, my normal image. I've got the blown out one, and I've got the darkened one. And all I need to do is say OK. And then it's going to bring this over here again on my other monitor here. Oh, come on, come over here. Uh, it's going to bring this little window in here where you can mess with these little settings a bit. If you get a lot of kind of weird kind of like, you know, uh, auroras around things here, that's what this remove ghost does here. I don't think this is going to matter now that I change the settings. That's going to going to be fine. But this this actually can help take some of the weird banding out of it if you're having that problem. And you can tweak with this little slider over here. And in fact, if you drop it down from 32-bit lower, there's a whole bunch of other options that I'm not going to go into. You can explore those on your own. Uh, but I do find that just, just moving this guy a little bit, you know, one way or the other, in most cases, when it's not out in the desert, I find that I've got to crank this guy a little bit to the left here and kind of brighten it up a little bit. Uh, in this case, I'm actually going to do the opposite. I'm going to bring it down a tiny little bit so it's not quite so blown out there in that final version. And then I'm going to say OK, and we'll see how this looks. And again, don't worry so much about how it looks here. Actually, that looks okay, though. Don't worry if it looks a little weird here in Photoshop because it'll, it'll look different in Blender when you bring it in. So now the last thing we're going to do is come over here and say Save As. And this time, we're going to go and call this um, Iran. Let's call it Iran. And I will change it to a Radiance HDRI file here. So that's where we're going to get the HDRI information from. And then we're going to go ahead and save that. And then I think we are all set. So now what we're going to want to do is jump back over here to Blender. And I'm going to go here to the World tab here, where I've brought in my, I'll just remove Angkor Wat there. And I'll open up the new environment here of Iran. There it is right there. I'm going to open up that image, and we'll see how it looks. And it looks OK. So remember, you're not going to get the uh, environmental lighting in um, uh, Eevee, although you'll see it in Eevee. Here, we'll just jump over here to Eevee and see how it looks in Eevee. And we'll lose, yeah, it looks a little bit more flattened out here, but the background looks great. You know, it looks pretty good here. And there's no green backpacks or anything in the scene here. So we've got this terrific backdrop in it. We're still getting the great reflections here, even in EV and the directional light in there. Um, although we can, you can cheat a little bit here. I think I did, yeah, put in a little sunlight in here in the same position as where the sun's coming from in the scene here. Um, so you can actually drop in a light in the scene in EV if you want to get a little bit better cast shadows here. But in cycles, you don't necessarily even need the the, the sunlight there, although it's a little, little brighter. But don't forget, too, you also have the ability to come into the world settings here and play around with the strength in here. So if I make that, you know, 1.5 or whatever, if I want to punch that up a little bit, I can keep on brightening the scene here without blowing out my background too much. So, you know, no matter what, even if you cheat a little bit with a an actual light, this is the thing you don't need to do if you're using the full lighting information. But, you know, we're getting this kind of like pinky reflections of all the sand in here it definitely is and of course you just the reflections in reflective surfaces we're definitely getting the HDRI responding to the objects in the scene nicely and we've got a cool backdrop for your Tatooine model or whatever you want to do in the foreground here so hopefully you found that fun and informative and I've just been having a great time hunting all over the world if nothing else it's just kind of like just clicking on all those panoramas and seeing amazing places and countries that you've never been to uh, especially while we're not traveling as much these days has been a lot of fun so hopefully that that um, is something that you can try.